Hey kids, Miss Kulkarni here. Are you ready to have some fun with organic chemistry? We are going to discuss functional groups in organic chemistry. With that, it comes the structure and naming of organic compounds. So let's begin guys. First of all, what do we mean by functional groups? There are different ways we can define functional groups. Now, even though we use the word groups, a functional group could be one single atom. Just like maybe if you have Cl, that becomes a functional group, chloro. Or we can have a group of atoms like maybe OH is the hydroxide or it's the alcohol group. Or we can even have multiple bonds present in that functional group. For example, we may have C double bond O and H that's an aldehyde group. So we can have single and double bond present at the same time. So what is special about functional groups? Compounds containing same functional groups, they will always have some distinctive similar properties. In other words, we can say the properties are governed by the functional group. So here is the list of functional groups and I don't want you to get alarmed. The list is quite big, but it's very easy to identify which functional group we have in a molecule. Look at this, alkane. We actually cover this. Alkane is all having single bonds. They have a general formula CnH2n plus 2 and they end up always with anes. Alkenes, they all end up with anes and they have a double bond and CnH2n is the formula for alkenes. Again, there's an example given C2H4 will be ethene. Alkyne, alkynes are the one which will have at least one triple bond and we get formula CnH2n, example is ethyne. The next one is haloalkane and the word halo comes from halogens which are chlorine, bromine, iodide or even fluorine. General formula is Rx where X stands for the halo group and here is an example if you get C2H5Cl, C2H5 stands for ethyl group so we can say chloroethane. We can also write down this as ethyl chloride. Here is the next one, alcohol. They all end up with OL. The functional group is actually OH which is hydroxide. So you can clearly see OH is the functional group and C2H5 corresponds to ethane, so it will be ethanol. Aldehyde, they all will end up with al. And the functional group there is CHO. Look at the compound. It's CH3, CHO. That's obviously CHO as the functional group. And when we look at the parent name, this is tricky. We have to make sure we count the carbon atom which also corresponds to functional group. So we got two carbon atoms here. Two stands for eth and the parent name will be ethane. Since it's aldehyde, we put ethane and we add al to that. So it's ethanol. Here are some more examples. So we get other one as ketone. They all end up with own and then they will always have carbonyl C double bond O as a group. So in this case, we are counting all carbon atoms. We get three carbon atoms, that is propane. And since it belongs to ketone family because of CO group, it is propane and we added simply own propanone. Next one is carboxylic acid. Keep in mind, it always has oic acid. And then the functional group will be visible by COOH. So in this example here, COOH is the carboxylic acid and we need to count both the carbon atoms. So 2 stands for eth and to that we add oic acid so it becomes ethanoic acid. Moving on, ethers. Ethers have an oxygen which separates two alkyl groups and in the naming we use oxy for one alkyl group and ane for the other group. This is what is going to look like. It's R O R dash, two alkyl groups separated by one oxygen in the middle. And the example here, we can clearly see we got two groups which are ethyl groups here. 
but we are going to combine one of the group with oxygen and then that ethyl group with oxygen will be called as ethoxy group. So this is ethoxy and then parent group will be ethane. Here comes the next one, amide. And I want to remind you that amide bonds are present in all peptides. In fact, in our body, we have lots of proteins and they will show amide bond. How do we identify that group in organic molecule? That is always CONH2. And we will work on the reactions. It is when a carboxylic acid reacts with an amine, we get amide there. So amide will be CONH2. Again, we are going to make sure we count that carbon atom. So the parent chain will be ethane. Since it's an amide, we put ethanamide. Ester groups, very popular. If you are used any perfumes, they are nothing but esters. So how do we name that? Again, you will see two alkyl groups here. One we will name as YL, alkyl group, methyl, ethyl, and the other will be O8, propanoate, ethanoate group. This is a common structural formula, R, C, O, O, R, or we can put R dash there. Here is an example of ester and when we name the parent chain, always count the carbon atom which belongs to functional groups. So we got two carbon atoms that makes it ethane and we are going to make that into ethanoate whereas CH3 will be methyl group. So the compound name is methyl ethanoate. The last one here is nitrile which corresponds to C and cyanide group. Of course, we call in organic chemistry nitrile so that becomes ethane nitrile. To summarize, here is a list of functional groups with their names. So you should be able to identify a functional groups in a given organic molecule. Make sure that you are counting that carbon atom which could be part of your functional groups. All right, are you guys ready to name a compound with functional groups? Here's our first example. And look at this, that's NH2 group. If you recall, that corresponds to an amine or amino group. What is the parent chain? There are five carbon atoms, so it's penta. I don't see any double or triple bond. That means this will be a pentane. And I got amine there. That means it will be amino pentane. And which position will be that? I always start numbering with carbon atom having the least number to which the functional group is attached. So it is one amino pentane. Moving on, next one is OH which is alcohol functional group. And the next one is numbering. Whichever way I'm going to number, I will still have carbon atom number two to which OH is attached. So I can say it is two and then propane and there is an alcohol there, so propanol. Look at the next one. This is CO, carbonyl group, which corresponds to ketone. When we count carbon atoms, we know that is 4, so it corresponds to butane. Since it is a ketone, we are going to say it's butanone. And the position for that carbon atom will be... 2, so it is 2-butanone. Or we can also write down that as butane 2 and O-N-E. It means the same thing. Can you guess the next one? There is an oxygen separating two alkyl groups. Obviously, it must be an ether. And now, we need to make sure that we are grouping the smaller alkyl group with oxygen that's a methyl group with oxygen which becomes methoxy. So it will be methoxy and this will be ethane. So there we go. I'm pretty sure you all know how to name a compound with functional group. But let's take some examples which are a little complex. So here is the example. We can easily spot that that's an amine group and then you need to find out the longest straight chain 
which is this one you always number the carbon atom where the functional group is attached so that's one two three and did you see we have a substituent now which is a methyl group there so let's begin with the parent name three carbon atoms so it will be prop and we have an amine so you can say this is propane because we don't have double bond or triple bonds and then here we got amino group at position number one and at position number two we got a substituent to methyl how about next one look at this c o n h 2 that is an amide so look at the carbon atoms now we do count the one which belongs to functional group so we end up getting four carbon atoms that means this will be butane as a chain and since we have amide groups is butane amide butane amide and the position of amide group is at one so that's one butanamide. Look at this. COO. Obviously, this is an ester group. When you name ester, anything which comes after CO, carbonyl group, we write that one first. So it is going to be methyl group. And then you count the number of carbon atoms here. Those are four. So we get butane and in case of ester we add the word o8 so it is methyl butanoate one more to go and cho corresponds to aldehyde so what do we got we got straight chain one two three and four that's butane since we got aldehyde it will be butanol Aldehyde is at position number 1, so we can say 1 butanol. And at position number 3, we got a methyl group. So it will be 3 methyl 1 butanol. So what do you think? Guess what? We learned all these functional groups and how we can name the compounds which contain those. So way to go. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you again in next video. Until then, bye-bye.